Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Friday, March 22nd, and we are here trying to help you make better financial decisions. We do that by encouraging you to go to our website, jillonmoney.com. While you're there, you can check out all the content that lives there. Got a lot of stuff in the blog section. We've got uh, a ton of stuff that is going on in videos. All of a sudden, I'm on TV so much, it's like ridiculous, but whatever. They'll do my hair and makeup. I'm happy to have that done. Uh, and you can also sign up for the free weekly newsletter, which comes out today, every Friday. Mark, how are the newsletter subscriptions going? This is your baby. So how are we doing? Doing well. We have uh, f- exceeded the goal by a lot that you set at the end of last year. Oh, really? That's good. Okay, yeah. great. And what about our um, our subscription service? which is called Jill on Money Live, where we just had a phenomenal, phenomenal webinar with Cal Newport. What about the people who didn't sign up in time, that did not spend $35 to participate in the Cal Newport webinar, but now they're like, wait, I've got total FOMO. I want to buy in. I got to see Cal and everyone else that's ever been on Jill on Money Live. How many people have you corralled? Because isn't your bonus based on this one? This is your bonus number. Remember that. I, I've 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 lost keeping track of what's what. But yeah. as is always the case with the webinars, as we were approaching the webinar last week, a lot of uh, subscriptions rolled in. Uh, so if anyone has FOMO, you can still sign up and see everything we've done. Yeah, exactly. And so I want to be clear that if you want to be part of this, it is imperative that you get on our website and just click on the Jill on Money Live. 35 bucks for a whole year, back catalog, extra videos, all this fun stuff. We have it going on at JillOnMoney.com. Okay, now uh, we got a bunch of emails. Wow, it feels like somehow spring is in the air and all of a sudden everybody decided maybe it's because of tax season or whatever. I don't know, but there seem to be a lot more emails coming in. Okay. This is from anonymous who is one of, uh, has a very big family. The anonymous folks, the anonymous family, they are vast. They keep coming up. That family will certainly qualify for financial aid. Yeah. (laughs) Well, remember, uh, number of kids in school at the same time no longer matters for financial aid. Uh, Okay. This is from Anonymous, whose subject is the trifecta. So it reads, hi, Jill and Mark. A couple of your recent podcasts hit on several issues that we are dealing with regarding my in-laws. They are in their late 80s and have resisted until very recently and getting their estate in order. This is that woman who's living in London who had that problem is terrible. Like, I don't know why parent people are so resistant. Okay. Anonymous goes on to say, while they have pension and social security income, my father-in-law has started and stopped several businesses, none of which have made any money. Hmm. Oh my gosh. He's also quite addicted to options day trading to the point where he took out a reverse mortgage which was on top of their existing mortgage to fund his trading. And they have no other savings. Oh, God. This is a terrible story. With last year's rising interest rates, that did not go well. Their mortgage rate, oh, they must have had an adjustable rate, which approached 9%. They came to us for help. Oh, my God. They they requested a gift of about $300,000 to pay off the mortgage. After talking to our advisor, we made it a loan, complete with mortgage paperwork, that's good, so that we are protected in case any future creditors try to claim the house. So far, they've been on time with their monthly payments to us. Father-in-law is a proponent of the, quote, die with zero, but we fear they'll have less than zero at this rate. We also worry about mother-in-law's future. She's a few years younger, doesn't stand up to her husband's financial foolishness. We will help them out again if needed, but it galls me that the father-in-law continues to use their money to play the market and not put anything aside for health care or other emergency spending. I don't know if there's anything else we can do to help them protect themselves. You could go, I wonder if they know where this account is traded. You could, can you like report somebody and say like, you should shut this dude off? That's not going to work. You um, know, unless they're somehow in charge of the account, they have a power of attorney. That's not going to work. Then at, uh, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if there is anything you can do. Honest to God, I don't know if there's anything you can do. It's a terrible story. I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm so upset by this because it's like, 
it is belligerent, it's foolhardy, it's selfish, but it is addictive behavior, no doubt. It's crazy. So how, where's the money in that account? What we should have done is, th- I think that maybe it should have been, there was like, a uh, you should have predicated any, like, I think I would have said, any more help, now we have the help that's, any more help, we shut down the account and we have to see a zero balance and we take over your finances. That's what it has to happen. There has to be some sort of, we have to be able to create some safety for the mother-in-law. So if they want more help, uh, then that help comes at a cost. And the cost is we are going to make sure that you don't do this anymore. So if you want help, that's what it's going to be. Then wait till he dies and take care of your mother-in-law. So, so foolhardy. Oh, okay. This is from Ash. Hi, Jill and Mark. I enjoy listening to you. I've listened to both shows. Your advice is kind, thoughtful, and entertaining too. Well, it wasn't so kind just now. I've been wanting to send a message and now I have the time to do so. I am soon to be 44. My husband is 46. We have uh, one child we welcomed into our family almost three years ago. We're not going to have any more. We're fortunate to have steady income, make a combined 550 grand a year. That's 380,000 for me and husband 170,000. His assets. 160,000 in cash, 90 grand in a CD, 550,000 in a pre-tax 401k, 130 in a Roth IRA. There's also a brokerage account of $12,000 and I bond of 10 grand, small 529. He's also in school. This is the husband with a few more classes for a graduate degree, pays for cash. He works for the federal government. He'll get a pension at retirement. I'm sure, I'm not sure how much. He can retire at age 58 and a half. Okay. I like this because it's all separate. So she's got 160 grand in cash, 735 in a 401k, mega backdoor Roth option of $18,000 a year. And Roth portion currently is 80,000 of the total. Roth IRA of 90, uh, brokerage firm, brokerage account, $860,000. 529 for the toddler, 450 grand, fit grand, 450 dollars a month. Current balance 21 grand. I bond 10 grand. If I stay with my job until age 60, I could get some sort of non-inflation adjusted pension, which would be 10,000 dollars a month. Wow! So they got 10 grand a month in expenses. So okay, they're fairly frugal. I think we're cash heavy. I'm not worried about uh, where we are for retirement. I'd like to pay off our mortgage. Darn it. Mark, I don't know what to do about my my feelings around this, but let me make it clear. So let me just say they have a mortgage. There's one hundred seventy thousand dollars left. The house is valued at eight hundred fifty thousand. The mortgage is two and a half percent. I'm yelling. I leaned back from my microphone, Mark, so it wasn't too crazy. That's crazy. Paying it off will give us a cushion to both move fully to all Roth and for it. Why? That's a that it's just, it's an insane idea. OK, so here's what it is. What do you think? What should we do instead of not paying? Up? Okay, let me see. This is hysterical. Virginia gives a tax write-off for 529 contributions. So I need no need. I see no need to front load it. Well, okay. How about we put in 18 grand right now? Cause that's your tax write-off, but I would still do it. It's an amazing plan to be able to do that. You have to take your tax benefit, but you're now saving for college as if it were almost like a Roth for college. So that's number one. What else should they do with their cash? How about invest it? How about that? Why are we paying off a two and a half percent loan? I mean, it's like you hit it so big, so big. And by getting that two and a half percent note, and now you want to pay it off? It's Mark, what can I say about this that, that makes it clear? No, don't pay it off. What else do you want to say about it? Uh, I mean, yes, don't pay it off. It's a psychological thing for so many people. They just want to get rid of it. They hate debt. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. I, the, the, the 529 plan should be, you know, with all this surplus cash flow, put it in there. Like $21,000 right now is probably a little light. So I yeah. would get cranking on that if you don't, you know, and, if you have no other use for the cash. And by the way, the second question is, should they just have a joint account instead of two separate brokerage accounts? Sure. Yes. That's fine. Uh, by the way, Ashley's like, oh, I hope no one, get, you don't get hate mail from them. No, it's not hate mail. It's like, I'll tell you what, people are going to be mad that you even are considering paying off a two and a half percent mortgage. That's what they're going to get mad. No one's like, I have to say, is the hate mail still coming in in the same way, Mark, or not? No, not really. No. 
I feel like people get it. Like some people have money. Some people don't have money. Everyone's over that. Okay. They're just numbers. It's a million or it's a hundred thousand or it's 10,000. Add a zero, take a zero away. People are stressed about money, whether they have a lot, uh, not so much and broke. Everyone's stressed about it for some dumb reason. We get ourselves nuts because you know why we're human beings. But what people are going to be mad about is when you pay off a two and a half percent note where the right now to get a new mortgage, you have to pay six and three quarters or seven percent. So, yeah, they're mad about that. Don't pay it off. OK, Loretta wants to know about how to start an account. Um, oh, OK. Well, so Loretta's 62. She's still working full time. She said, I have eight hundred dollars a month, Roth or brokerage. We need more information. We need more information. Like if you're still working, okay, and you have a pre-tax retirement account already and it's a chunk of money that's in there, then potentially, yeah, we would have you do a Roth. But if you have not a lot of money outside of uh, retirement and you need an actual emergency reserve fund, then yeah, maybe seed that. And a brokerage account would just be taxed based on the income generated and the capital gains when you sell something. But we need more information, Loretta. Sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, Gary writes, my daughter is 11 and I have a question about her credit. Should I create an account with one of the credit monitoring services and lock her down until she's 18? Yeah. You know what? I love this idea, Mark. Does Theo have a credit record or not? Theo's, uh, I froze his accounts. Okay. So this is what we, Mark, explain how that works. Cause I think this is what everybody should do because there is identity theft of minors, it's weird, but it happens. So what did you do to freeze that account? Yeah, it's not as straightforward as if, you know, when you did it or when I did it. For yeah. us, it's very simple. But when uh, you're doing it for a minor, you actually have to prove that you are the minor's parent mm -hmm. or guardian. So you have to submit, uh, I, I forget what it was, but you had to submit some proof of, of guardianship or parenthood. Uh, but that's it. It's just a few extra steps you got to jump through. But yeah, I would definitely do it. All right. So here's what we do. So we're going to, so set up the... Set up some credit, Gary, freeze the credit. That's important. So no one else has access to it. And then you'll protect her. Oh, here's a nice one here. Also, this is from Jim, who is a beneficiary for two annuities um, that he inherited from his mother. One is $50,000. It has to be paid out in 10 years. The second is worth 65000 must be paid out over five years. Considering the tax laws are changing in 26. Would it be better to take the distributions completely in 24 and 25 or span it out over five and 10 year periods? Oh, one piece of information missing, Jim, is what is your tax bracket? Because I certainly would be interested in the second one getting paid out like that one. I might be interested in trying to get out in the next couple of years, but it depends what your tax bracket is. OK, so. Uh, so that's it. That's I can't believe it. Oh, I just want to also say to everybody, we understand that when you write these emails that you expect a, re a response and we try to do the best we can. We are so happy to do the best we can. But we you have to just like, no, it, there's tons and tons and tons of mail. We do what we can. And Mark, is it still true that you get a quicker response if you're willing to come on the air? Uh, it's less and less true nowadays. I mean, oh, it's a man. it's a very long line. It's a long line, but that's a nice thing, and we we will try to get as many of your questions answered. In fact, we're we're considering doing something really fun, which is we're we're we've been brainstorming ideas with our friends over at the Compound for our YouTube show, and uh, I think Mark, you had this idea, so I'm just going to give it to you, or it might have been Josh, Josh being downtown Josh Brown of the Compound that we want to try to figure out what are the most frequently asked questions that we field. And then we want to start doing these little mini videos where we answer those questions quickly. In that case, Mark, we'll have this whole library at, on the YouTube show, right? Searchable. And we can put it up. And then when you have a question, we can you can just go to the YouTube Jill on Money Powered by the Compound and search your question. Because we get a lot of the same questions over and over. I know the facts are a little different, but some of them are repetitive, but that's okay. But I mean, it'd be cool if we had that whole library. Anyway, we uh, appreciate all of the questions. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you can subscribe to this podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. It's Friday, business, music, composed by Joel Goodman. 
Mark Talaire said, the best executive producer in the world and the king of all things JillOnMoney.com, our website. We're distributed by Odyssey. Put your hands on someone's back, physically, metaphorically. If it's physical, make sure they're like getting touched. You know, people are weird these days. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 